Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Saturday, April the 17th, and it's 9.36 a.m. Okay, I want to share with you some of these letters from Dawn that I have received and been saving. This one came in April the 15th at 6.25 a.m. Because I get these from Hong Kong. There are missionaries over there in Hong Kong. Or at least she is. I'm not sure if all these people live over there too. But I know they're regulars with her ministry. Okay, let's get started. Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. I was thinking of how David ran with his slingshot to plant a stone in Goliath's forehead and that we need the same resolve or you could say faith in attacking difficult challenges and problems. God was with David and he is with us to cause us to be able to do all that he is requiring of us. We are well able by the Spirit of the Lord to be overcomers and more than conquerors. Do you know what kind of faith it had to have took for little David? I say little because he was young. And King Saul wanted him to wear his armor. And it was so big, he said, I can't fight anybody in this. However he worded it. So he took it off. And he went out there and what little he wore with his slingshot and five smooth stones. And we were talking last night about um, Nimrod and how when they found his body, it was so perfectly preserved. But yet, did you all know he had become a giant after he couldn't... Uh, God stopped him from building the Tower of Babel. He uh, went off and became a giant. And I figured it was because he had his DNA changed. And a lot of the Nephilim were giants in those days. I don't know. It's my theory. How else did it happen, though? How else? Did he drink their blood? Is that how he got their DNA in him? I don't know, but they had they had the same fallen angel technology back then as we have now, so think about that. Anyway, that's Nimrod's head had been cut off, a deadly head wound, and there was a prophecy about uh, someone be oh from Edward Umling. Someone being brought back to life. And we got talking about what if Nimrod was brought back to life? I mean, they probably just stuck his head back on there and being healed of a deadly head wound. That would be deadly. But giants had to have their heads cut off or they wouldn't be truly dead. They could heal. Anyway, I'm getting off subject. That was about David and Goliath. And I tied it in on what we were talking about last night. I find that more than coincidental. Anyway, in Romans 8, 37, it says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In him we are. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And that doesn't say what version that is. All right. Now this is some um, one of those that doesn't submit their prophecy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm not sure I ever heard this one in one of Don's letters, 
but I've heard this message lately. We shared it on, they shared it on Grafted in Team Jesus. All right. It's titled, You Are the Sum Total of All the Generations That Have Lived Before. I meant to share it too. Thank you, Lord, for putting it in this newsletter. Because I just can't remember if I don't write it down. I should take notes when I'm on with them. This is dated April 10th, 2021 by someone named Pollox. P-O-L-L-O-X. Pollux. All right, this is the word. You are all the children of Adam and Eve. You that are still human. So you are all brothers and sisters. Black, white, yellow, blue, or brown. All equal in my eyes. You are the sum total of of all generations since Adam and Eve. So all the good and all the evil, all they created and destroyed is in your blood, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. What was in them? Who they were as Adam and Eve was passed down in the blood of their children for three generations. And so it goes down through history to the present. If your ancestors were godly, they passed this on down to their progeny. If they were evil, addicted, great sinners, unbalanced, this was passed down. The measure of evil is now full. The human will is finished. I am coming very soon. If I do not act now to restore my vineyard and claim my inheritance, you will destroy yourselves and the world which I am created in love. Choose now your final destination. You came from me. You will return to me. I am the only one. The snake king was never a creator sustainer. He is a void. His kingdom is one of death, chaos, hate, murder, hell, the lake of fire, and eternal damnation. Think well on your final end. It is now. He's warning you, don't take it. Hell, the lake of fire, and eternal damnation, that's what you'll get. And you cannot detox from it, as I have heard someone say. All right. April 15th, 2021. A victory is right around the corner. It, oh, hallelujah. It will seem small to others, but huge to you. Okay, so maybe that's not taking, out, taking us out of here, but a victory. It will seem small to others, but huge to you. Rejoice in what will happen as a result of your obedience. You ask me what to do, and I will show you in the night. It must be a dream or a word, a vision. That would be nice. You do it. 
and the outcome will be good. I know everything you need to be doing. All you have to do is ask me. <coughs> Excuse me. All you have to do is ask me. I asked my father about everything I did, and then I did it. The verse given is John 5, 19. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. That was uh, given to Bev Robinson. All right. Here's the next one. I'm reading all of these today. Also April 15th. I validate whatever abuse you have experienced. I feel your pain more than you realize because I have experienced mistreatment as well. Boy, that's putting it mildly. It grieves my heart that you have had to endure immense agony from wrongdoers. Plain and simple, it is cruelty, exploitation, manipulation, and the list goes on. Now, this may not pertain to everybody, but it pertains to a lot of us. Taking advantage of another is wrong. He must have said it like that because it's spelled out with spaces between every letter. I implore you to forgive those who have mistreated you. <coughs> Excuse me. So much freedom awaits you when you do. Yeah, the Lord's been, that's the end of the message. The Lord has been bringing up people from my past. I wake up like in the middle of the night and like it's almost like a vision, but it's in my mind. It's, you know, a thought. But I see it clearly, you know, something somebody did. And it's usually a medical person. I haven't been brought up anything from anybody from school. Well, probably did that, that one time. Yeah, a couple times I, I I had my sister and brother and I got some had some problems. We had to go to Catholic school, so we had to walk over two miles through the neighborhood where all uh, I know the school was probably half black, half white, but the group, there was like a big group of black children that would walk past us, and we had to walk past them, and we both walked on the same side of the street, because their neighborhood was past the end of our street. Anyway, we had problems with them, and my brother had problems when we moved out to the all-white school. I mean, because he was really thin. And anyway, you know, kids can be cruel. So you just, if you have an experience in your past, you may not even realize you, it, it hasn't been bothering you. But you never actually spoke out. I forgive that person for doing that to me. I got whacked over the head with a really thick book. Almost knocked me out. That's how hard they hit me. Because I stood up to put my hand over my heart and say the Pledge of Allegiance during a pep rally. Anyway, 
The scripture of this is Luke eleven fourteen of the Amplified Bible. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And in brackets it says, who has offended or wronged us. Close brackets. And lead us not into temptation brackets but rescue us from evil closed brackets yes lord rescue us from evil come lord jesus and that was given to kevin robinson now here's the last one dated april 15 you really do not know how you will respond to circumstances in your life until you encounter them. It is very important to distribute to others and receive for yourself my extra measure of favor needed during challenging events you encounter. I'm going to repeat that. It is very important to distribute to others and receive for yourself my extra measure of favor needed during challenging events you encounter. Look to an example in order to be encouraged and to have a reference from which you can respond my child it's from which you can respond my child humble yourself to learn from those who have been there before and the verse given with this is first corinthians 11 1 in the amplified bible pattern yourselves and that's in all caps for some reason after me Pattern yourselves after me. And in brackets, follow my example. Close brackets. As I imitate and follow Christ. Parentheses, the Messiah. Closed parentheses by Jonas Bolin. And I pulled up the 1 Corinthians 11. NASB 1995 Be imitators of me just as I also am of Christ. That's much simpler, but I like the Amplified as it clearly um, spells it out a little more. Just pattern yourselves after after. Paul is saying, pattern yourself after me. Follow my example, in other words, as I imitate and follow Christ, the Messiah. All right? Be ye imitators of Christ. Okay. Now, that's the end of that one. So, I'll just close off this video. I'll plead the blood of Jesus over it and over each and every single one of us and all our devices and our internet connections so we can stay connected until we're out of here and so with that i'll say bye for now i'll talk to you later